Welcome back to the channel guys and to another video. In today's video, we're going to do some investigating on her. The problem we're having is whenever I turn a corner to the left or to the right, I'm getting a funny noise at the back here. So we're going to do some investigating and see what the problem is down here. And whilst I'm down here, I'm going to do some maintenance to this rear end here. I'm going to uh, sort out that leak and do a modification to this differential. So you are joining me now in the cockpit of my Bucky, my pickup, my LDV, my Ute. I suppose it depends in what in which country you're from. So this is a 2001 Isuzu 2.8 turbo diesel. This is one of those die-hard buckies here in South Africa. It is quite a popular bucky known for its ruggedness and toughness and being quite a workhorse. So as a workhorse, this bucket is perfect. I use this bucket as a workhorse. I use this bucket as my daily for business and stuff. It carts a bit of a weight at the back. But when you hit the open road, and I do enjoy the odd drive down the national roads, this bucket has a bit of an issue. And the issue is, guys, as I slide underneath the bucket towards the rear end, Is that as you can see it's quite a high ratio and whilst I'm down here you can see also some oil there and some oil there and uh, it's coming from it's coming from this pinion seal over here so I must do that maintenance as well on top of the modification which I'll be telling you about shortly. Okay, so I'm back inside the cab now. So with that diff ratio being a 455 five, five is to 1 is a relatively high ratio. That is perfect for, for carrying loads around. And this is what these vehicles were designed for. This is what they are meant to do. They're meant to, to cart things around from A to B. Hence the high ratio. So when you have a a load at the back and this is a one ton bucky when you have the the load at the back that ratio allows you to maintain a set speed quite quite easily so regardless when whether you have a load in or not this bucky's fuel consumption will remain the same being a mechanically driven engine so this doesn't have the like a math sensor or anything to that effect this is purely mechanical it runs or the diesel pump runs is directly is that is driven directly from the from the cams in front of the engine and it delivers set amount of fuel at set revs so irrelevant whether you have a loading at the back or not irrelevant of what you're carrying the same amount of diesel will be discharged or let's say delivered at set rev so this is the cluster of the of the bucket and as you can see she red lines at 4250 rpm that's where she red lines so this is quite a quite a it's a low revving vehicle because it has plenty of torque but the problem that we have is is because of the high ratio you cannot really reach high speeds and for me that love going on the open road every so now and then one would love to travel at a at a respectable speed and with this div ratio um yeah you kind of 
cannot ride a respectable speed. You kind of cruise along, you know, so it gets a little bit tedious on the open road. Ideally on the open road, ideally on the open road, you'd like to do a, like, you know, 110, 120. You know, that's the, the kind of speed that one would ideally would like to travel with, travel at. And when doing 120, the speedometer, the rev counter, is close to three and a half thousand revs. She's between 300 and 3,250 to 3,500. So she lays there and she redlines there. So this engine is almost doing max as far as revs go. You know, and then you still haven't reached your desired speed over there. You basically, for the, if like, I mean, when you travel on the open road, 100, 90 to 100 in this specific vehicle, is the, is the engine is very comfortable at that speed. Anything more than that, you'll be doing over 3,000, and you can actually start feeling that the engine is starting to, to reach its maximum revs and it's starting to take strain trying to do 120. So the modification I'd like to do is, is like ideally I'd like to be doing two and a half to 2,750. I'd like to be doing that rev and I would like to be doing about 120 at, at that revolutions. So that's the modification I want to do. I'll put in some clips now of what I mean at, uh, at, at revs. Right, so in this clip I'm cruising at about 80 and I'm doing just over 2,000 revs. So in this clip I'm doing 90 kilometers per hour, she's doing about 2,500 revs. And with this vehicle, 2,500 to 2,750 is the happy rev that she loves. So at 100 I'm doing, I'm going to 2,750. Okay, so this is the fun bit. Once you start exceeding 100 kilometers per hour, the rev start going to 3,000. Right, so as you saw in that clip, I was starting to move to like 120 or so. You know, that is kind of where you want to travel on the national roads. And the, the rev counter was moving to 3,250. And I, I'm telling you, when you reach 120 and, and you know, 120, 125, you're doing three and a half thousand revs and that engine is not that engine is not happy at that at that rev because she's almost redlining so the part of the modification that i want to do lies in the shelf of beer so part of my modification lies in this box let's check it out okay guys so there you have it i purchased a, a brand new crown and pinion for my differential for my rear end and the ratio that I'm going to put in there we go 3.9 so with this final driver um, 3.9 is to 1 this final driver hopefully I'll achieve the revs that I'm looking for as you saw the my final drive as it in right now is 4.55 five, five is to 1 and, you know so I'm hoping to achieve my set revs at 120 using this. Yeah, so like I said, the, the diff ratio, that's a nice to have, and I'm going to change that as I showed you guys. But the main issue why I'm actually going to pull the, the rear end out is, as I stated in one of my earlier clips, when I turn a corner, whether it be to the left or to the right, I hear knocking noise at the back there. You know, it's like when something been flung from one side to the other. And when I go over speed bump, I also hear funny noises at the back. So I'm going to investigate and see what's going on at the back there. Okay, guys, so I'm back underneath trying to investigate. And I immediately found out what the issue is. Check out this rubbers on this, on this hangers here. You can see this rubber is quite squashed here. You can actually see it's all broken. And this side is non-existent. So obviously when I'm turning, this spring is actually, the spring is actually moving in the hanger and it's actually knocking up against that side because that, that's obviously the, the knocking noise I'm hearing 
when I turn, see this is rubber there, this side is completely gone. Let's check the other side. Okay, I'm now on the passenger side at, at the back. And it's exactly the same here, guys. Exactly the same. Check that out. You can actually see the, the bolt inside there. You can see the shiny bit. You can see the rubber split. This side here, the rubber is actually out and actually broken here. So this is actually playing around as I, as I, as I drive when I turn. See, this side is bad. And if you actually look, if you actually look at the hanger, it, it looks almost like this is bent slightly down like this. But I'll inspect that when I take the leaf spring out. Let's, let's check the front end quickly. Moving now to the front end of the leaf spring. Here, yeah, let's have a look here. Same story here guys, you can see she's completely up against metal to metal this side here and this side is quite far, it's quite a big gap, I can always get my pinky in here. That rubber is also quite corroded there, this rubber is non-existent this side, so once again this is moving about here when I turn and that's why I'm getting that, that metallic or you just say that knocking noise. I'm going to turn left to right because this is obviously floating floating over, all over the show here let's just go check that side by the driver's side front okay i'm now driver's side front leaf spring let's have a look here same story again here guys nothing there and quite a big gap that side so these bushes these bushes, they busted. I'll have to get other bushes. And there's no more rubber inside here. Okay, I actually replaced this, this bushes uh, about five years ago, five or six years ago. This is just normal rubber inside here. I think I'll replace this with a nice polyurethane or something. I went out and purchased these. These are bushes for the leaf springs. You can see it's, it's yellow polyurethane. They're nice and hard. They, there's a slight give in it there. But they're nice and hard. This should work. I'm going to stick this in and this should solve the issue. At one stage I was thinking of making my own bushes. I actually thought of using this. So I actually thought of using this. This is a HDPE and I, was, and I was actually going to machine this on my lathe to get these you know to to that shape I was going to get some more of this but um, I think this might be a better option although this isn't as hard as nylon and I mean this is nylon years long as this isn't as hard so this might have worked because I think the nylon should have machined, it should have gone that route. I think this might have been a bit too hard and it might start getting airline cracks. You know, when you, when there's a load in, it might start getting airline, airline cracks. Whereas this was a bit more forgiving. But the polyurethane is definitely a better option. Yeah, so speaking about options, guy, I'm going to, guys, I'm going to end this video at this note. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell not to catch not to miss out on the the next one in the next one i'll also i'll be taking things apart and i'll also be showing you how to work out the the clearance between the pinion and the crown wheel that's when i get to to that and i'll also be showing you the teeth contact and what to do should you you know should the teeth contact not be correct so like I said, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Don't forget to tell the friends to subscribe. And uh, thanks you guys for subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers for now. Can anybody out there hear me?